couple of years back, I went down to uh, Jerez as well and went down to the Tio Pepe bodega. And there's such a variety of sherry, you know, and it's kind of uh, a bit misleading a little bit when you just say sherry matured, sherry finished, but there's, it's such a world of flavors and types of sherries and casks out there. Even, you know, uh, seasoned versus uh, a solera cask, for example. And yeah. one thing that I keep seeing when um, the Dalmo comes up is the Matusalam casks. So could you just yeah. tell us a little more about these Matusalam casks and a little more uh, deeper knowledge about uh, the sherry and port cask would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sherry is something I'm massively passionate about. And, and I've been very lucky over the years to have spent a lot of time in the south of Spain working mm -hmm. with the cooperages and the bodegas. and yeah, I mean, th this, this industry has a huge amount of texture. Um, when we say sherry, you know, I, I think people automatically think of something uh, that has a flavor profile. They think of a, uh, maybe a slightly old fashioned view of, of mm -hmm. a category, you know, that, that maybe our grandparents were much more familiar with than maybe my generation is. Um, and I can understand why that is, but for me personally, it is my love. Um, I am very lucky to work in whiskey. I am really, you know, passionate about it. But, you know, it's right up there in terms of the things that I value in life. And sherry is, for me, mm -hmm. absolutely up there. Whiskey and sherry between one and two. Uh, then my daughter, uh, number three. <laughs> uh, then my son, then football and rugby, and maybe my wife after that. You know, so there's a... It's right up there for me. Within the sherry industry, you have lots of different types of sherry and styles, but they're all based on just a few grapes. Uh, Palomino Fino, Moscatel, and you also have Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez are the sweet ones. They're nice and juicy, uh, mm -hmm. and you know they, they're almost like treacle in the way that they look in the bottle, the Pedro Jimenez wines. So what we have access to at the Dalmore is some of the rarest and the oldest aged wines from Gonzalez Bias. And a great example of this is the Methuselah. The Methuselah wine itself is, you know, sweet. It has this lovely licorice kind of aroma. So sweetness is, is, is there, but it's like a, a spiciness and a sweetness at the same time. Uh, you have lots of fruits, lots of chocolates. And what we do is we take these casks from the Solera and then we send them to Scotland. And then what we will do is enhance our whiskies in those our whiskies at the Dalmore, so this 12-year-old is a great example, will spend most of its life in an ex-bourbon cask. That's the first mm -hmm. stage of maturation. And then what we'll do is we'll take around 50% of the whiskey away from the bourbon and we'll pop it into some of these beautiful Methuselah and also sherry casks. And what will then happen is that the, the cask will gift the whiskey lovely fruits, depth of flavor and complexity, and some of these spice notes that I mentioned, like mm -hmm. licorice, nutmegs, and cloves. So that's how we get that lovely complexity through the whiskies. So as you go around the bodegas, you'll find there are different saleras with different mm -hmm. wines in them. And when we use those different wines, what we get is different influences. So this is another one called Apostolis. Apostolis mm -hmm. is a Palo Cortado style of wine. Um, slightly different, uh, maybe more, more salinity coming through, slightly salty. You actually get a lovely salted caramel character coming through from these Apostolese casts. So we'll use these to get a slightly different influence from uh, our Dalmore single malts. So yeah, the, that's a, a sort of snapshot of, of, of how we go about doing this. And it's a real partnership. Uh, we have Richard Patterson here at the Dalmore, of course, uh, I've already mentioned him. Uh, but over at Gonzalez Bias, we also have a gentleman called Antonio Flores. And Antonio mm -hmm. Flores is effectively their master of wine and master distiller. So he's the expert in the casks in the bodegas. And he works very closely with Richard to source these beautiful casks from Gonzalez Bias. So watching these two guys work uh, as statesmen of the industry is uh, something as a, a young guy trying to make his way in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I get a huge amount of... Um, fun uh, but also lots and lots of knowledge and expertise from those guys as well and the great thing about them is they're so happy to help and pass on the information so that we can share it with you know the rest of the world so you know that's a that's a very very short version of, of how we go mm -hmm. out there and, and get sherry casks um, but you know 
these guys are working so hard to create some of the most beautiful wines in the world. And as a real advocate and, you know, custodian of, of whiskey, uh, I feel very similarly about Sherry because of the collaborative nature and how closely we need to work to get exceptional whiskey because Sherry casks can have such a beautiful impact on our whiskeys. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Dalmo 12, Daryl. If you could you just tell us more about the Dalmo range. And I'm also just going to quickly mention that the Dalmo, Jura and John Barr are represented in India by uh, VBEV really dynamic company uh, is bringing us these brands. And I'm just going to put their details down in the description, guys. Please go and uh, take a look. Uh, please, Daryl, if you could tell us about the range. Yeah, so we talked a lot about Sherry, and that's something that goes all the way back to when the Mackenzies arrived back in the 1800s. And that's actually still a fundamental part of the Dalmore story. Um, I've got three whiskies in front of me and, mm -hmm. and I'm going to move my, um, my glass over. I'll, I'll, I will go back to that. It's definitely not going to be <laughs> wasted. Um, but the three whiskies I have in front of me are the Dalmore 12 here on the left. Uh, in the middle, I have the Dalmore 15. And then at the end, I have King Alexander the Third. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the 12, really, we're talking about that house style of the Dalmore. And, and that's chocolate, orange and spice the three things that I would always say are present in every single Dalmore. Now they may change, um, you know, chocolate may be more dominant in one, spice may be more dominant in the, in the other. And there is a bit of a rule to that. I, I find as you move through the range, through the older age statements of the Dalmore, the spice becomes more prominent. The mm -hmm. chocolate and the orange is, is more obvious um, in the 12 and probably the 15. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the 12 and I'll just give you a quick nosing and tasting of mm -hmm. this single malt. And as you lift it to the nose, it's clear that orange chocolate and spice are, are there in abundance. And it's quite, um, it's quite intense, uh, but also quite complex. You know, there's quite subtle notes in here as well. Soft, dark chocolate, a little bit of nuttiness, I find in mm -hmm. the Dalmore 12 as well. Almost like, um, you know, caramelized walnuts or something like that. You get that lovely sort of suggestion. And as you hold that in the mouth for a few seconds, one thing I always notice with Dalmore is a, a lovely silky texture that flows over your palate. And as it flows, it drops off little flavor suggestions mm -hmm. over your tongue. And then on the finish, as you swallow, let it settle for a few moments. And a sign that sherry casks are there, good sherry casks, active casks with lots of character and lots of flavor. What tends to happen is you get a, almost a repeat in your mouth when you, the you almost um, get this mouth-watering sensation as the flavors come back retrospectively across your palate. And that's a great sign of sherry cast. And that's there for sure in the Dalmore 12. And that finish again is chocolate, bitter orange, you know, like snap dry orange skin when you open the peel and you smell mm -hmm. that lovely zestiness coming through, quite oily orange, which is really pleasant. And the spice, a little hint of clove, just as it passes over on the finish. So that's the, that's the Dalmore 12. And I think that this is a great example of what I would expect from a Dalmore when we talk about a house style. Mm -hmm. the, the Dalmore 15 is, is right along those lines. It is a, a brilliant example of the house style. And some people will say, and I've heard this being said by many people, maybe it's the best example of the house style of the Dalmore because it has lots of sherry influence. It has a little bit more time in the woods. So the spice comes through that little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, and the orange is there and the orange comes through in different ways because of the different types of sherry that we use to make the Dalmore 15. Now the Dalmore 15 is three different sherries. We use um, some Amoroso wines which are mm -hmm. younger sherries which have a lovely burst of sweetness but they bring a beautiful milk chocolate character to the single malt and they really enhance that silkiness that I talked about in the 12 as it flows over the palate and drops these little flavors. And the other thing is the Apostoles. Uh, these Palo Cortado uh, casks are in here as well, and they bring that little bit of saltiness. And that's really mm -hmm. nice because they, they give that, that mouth-watering sensation that I suggested in the 12. That actually comes even more to the fore in the 15. And of course, the Methuselah casks, which will always be there or thereabouts in the background. And they're bringing that hint of spice, but also that lovely decadence of chocolate. Because the Methuselah is made up of about 85% Palomino Fino grapes, and then mm -hmm. about 15 to 20% of the Pedro Jimenez grapes, 
So that okay. sweetness and decadence is coming through from the sweet wines that are famous down in the south of Spain. And they also help carry a beautiful finish. So as we nose this, as I've already talked about, the flavors are there in abundance from all these different influences. The silkiness even more so because of time, but also because of the, the complexity of the casks that we're using. And oh, I mean, that, that chocolate sensation on the palate is just, it just makes you sit back and relax. You know, it's the, it's the perfect whiskey for sitting, having a toast, having a nice conversation and just enjoying. And I would really recommend this whiskey with a really high cocoa content chocolate that mm -hmm. has a little bit of salt in it. You know, like a, a high cocoa content salted dark chocolate. That's a really beautiful pairing for the Dalmore 15. And what we've talked about is casks, you know, lots of influences and expertise that go into making these things. And really over time, what Richard's also done is he's taken what the Mackenzie's did and he's embraced what they did and, and, and built upon that and learned from that. But he's also added his own creative flair to the Dalmore. And, and I had a good conversation with him just this week, actually, on Wednesday about port pipes and how they influenced the Dalmore because Throughout the core range, as you move from the 12, we have the port we reserve, and then we move to the 15. And then we move to the cigar malt, and what we're now going to talk about is the King Alexander III. Mm -hmm. And through the 80s, what Richard did is he went over to a porto and started to work very closely with the Graham's Port Lodge. And he mm -hmm. started to expand his repertoire of casks, exploring wineries from all over the world that could enhance and influence the Dalmore whiskies in a really positive way. And through his curiosity and creative mind, he was able to create something that was a world's first, something truly unique that tells the story of our royal heritage that I talked about earlier on. And that's where the product King Alexander III came from. So a story that has a huge amount of emotion, but it also has a huge amount of ingenuity and creativity. And this whiskey is combining six different casks so the initial maturation like the others is in ex bourbon casks and then what we do is we split these whiskies out into six different casks these casks come from all over the world so we're going to a porto some beautiful tawny port pipes we're going to go to madeira for their wines famous wines of course we're going to go down to sicily where marsala wines are created these are absolutely beautiful wines that add a lovely elegance to the King Alexander III, Cabernet Sauvignon Bariques, giving a little bit of tannic quality and texture to the single malt whiskey. And of course, we, we couldn't make a, a whiskey like this without going back to our friends at Gonzalez Bias, where of course we bring in some of these beautiful Matuzlan that were also sherry casks to give us that classic Dalmore style. And also some fresh bourbon barrels from over in the, the States where the, the, the friends over in the Missouri area or the Ozark Mountains, what they do is they fell beautiful American oak trees, what we call super select bourbon barrels, and we bring those over. And those are first fill to give us that big hit of vanilla and orange, which is what they do for us. So this is a number of different influences, cultural influences from all over the world that come together in harmony mm. to create something very, very special. So when we lift this to the nose, there's a real promise of fruit and it's plums, it's apricots, it's cherries. There's a soft spice in there and a lovely honey quality. And as you taste it, again, the texture oh, un unravels itself over the palate, dropping lots and lots of these hints of chocolate, spice, fruit, a little pinch of that salinity coming through from the sherry, mm -hmm. but also from some of these other wines, the Madeiras and the Marsalas. And the finish itself is actually quite, quite robust. It gives you that lovely warming sensation. And the port pipes that we use do that. They bring that lovely weight to a single malt whiskey. And Dalmore, because of the new make spirit that we produce at the distillery, full bodied, you know, it has that lovely ability to mature for a long time but it also competes and complements all of these different influences. And again, it goes back to Richard and his ability to embrace all of these influences. So there's three whiskies from the Dalmore that I think tell a great story of, of, of the things that make the Dalmore very special. 
from our royal heritage to the curation of our exquisite casks and of course this idea of, of creating a masterpiece and, and really I, I do believe the King Alex is a, a perfect example of that. I must say I'm feeling a little left out not being there tasting those whiskeys. <laughs> I'm just going to head over to a friend's place soon because he's got like six bottles of the 15 and he's been ah, meaning okay. to open them on a special occasion with friends over. So I think this is a good time. <laughs> I'll take some salt and dark so. chocolate and head over. But, please, uh, honestly, please, please do. Yeah, that's a great idea. And also uh, you were talking about coffee and, um, mm -hmm. you know, have a, have, a, have a nice strong espresso style coffee. Um, mm -hmm. with a piece of dark chocolate, a glass of Dalmore 15 on the side, and go back and forward between the bitter, the sweet, even the textures, because the fattiness from the, the chocolate coats the palate, prepares it perfectly for a single malt. And the temperature mm -hmm. change as well, from the whiskey back to the coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, you're creating a whole experience there, and that's a really beautiful thing to do. That's a great idea. But uh, talking about pairings, uh, Daryl, so that's a question that I get constantly, you know, and also uh, with Indian food is something that people uh, ask me about pairings quite a bit. Uh, but I see you do a lot of these high end pairings and uh, just not just with food, but also with cigars and you, know, you mentioned coffee and chocolate and a whole bunch of things. Could you give us a little, uh, you know, insight into the pairings that you do and uh, any suggestions that you have as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Indian food, uh, you know, is very close to me. So the, the spice, the intensity of flavors, um, they can mm -hmm. be quite delicate sometimes, but they can also be quite powerful. And I think what whiskey is able to do, it's able to deal with all of these different types of influences. So, you know, I think when you pair a whiskey, um, really what you're looking to do is to, to complement flavors uh, most of the time. So flavors like vanillas, chocolates, um, you know, subtleness like butterscotchy kind of flavors. These are all flavors that are actually quite easy to find in most things. Uh, in Indian cooking, you know, you're, you're caramelizing onions and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're using ghee, which has a lovely texture and flavor, which is evident in, in many dishes. Um, so that's a great starting point uh, because that, that is a, you know, these are fundamental flavor builders in, in the mm -hmm. style of food that you guys are cooking over there. So, you know, think about that. The other thing is meats. Uh, what color of meat are you using? Are you using red meats? Are you using white meats? Are you using fish? These are great, great kind of signposts for the style of whiskey that you might choose. So a great example would be the Dalmore 15, where you have that richer style of single malt whiskey. I would really recommend having this with dark chocolate, as we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. But actually, darker meats, lamb, if you're going to use lamb in your curry or even um, goat, you know, if you're going to cook it for longer and get that, that really soft, you know, almost um, melt in your mouth style mm -hmm. meats that you do have to cook for a long time, those can be really nice with a Dalmore 15 because it's got the profile to complement but also to compete with some of these flavors. I often have venison curry and venison mm -hmm. curry with the Dalmore 15 is absolutely perfect. So more gamey. Um, my family call it couchy. I don't know how you, I don't know how that translates, but um, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. You know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that, yeah. that kind of flavor works really well with the Dalmore 15. But then if you have slightly sweeter style dishes uh, where there is more creaminess coming through, um, you know, through the, through the dish um, or fish, for example, I would definitely mm -hmm. go with Dalmore 12 where there are maybe some more fresh flavors coming through. So yeah, that's a, a rough guide, I suppose. Go red meats, go with a slightly heavier whiskey with, with more uh, dark chocolate style flavors, more spice notes, and make slightly fresher whiskey for those curries, those dishes um, that are working better with the slightly lighter, uh, more citrusy orientated single malts, which is Dalmore 12, because there's a lot of orange coming through in the Dalmore 12. Mm -hmm. um, that, that works really well. And King Alex uh, does work really well with sweeter dishes. Uh, so if you have things like sweet meats, um, something like that, where you can complement that, that's really, really delicious. Uh, but even in Spanish cuisine, you have things like churros, um, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of sort of vanilla, uh, oh, not quite creme brulee, but panna cotta style dishes and things like that. The, these work really, really well with the King Alex because the caramelized sugars also work well with the decadent sweetness coming through from those creamier vanilla flavored products. That's wonderful. You're giving me a lot of ideas now to, uh, you know, go over to my friend's place with more just, uh, just more than chocolate right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
going to be a nice weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, so he's probably not going to be happy that I'm going to be opening those bottles, but hey, <laughs> it's about time. Thank you.